Amen. Well, it's that time again, and it's that time where we open up the scriptures and, and break for us the bread of life. And uh, uh, last month we were in the sermon series about who is Jesus. And we talked about Jesus being the Savior. We talked about Jesus being Emmanuel, God with us. We talked about Jesus being the Messiah. We talked about Jesus being Lord. Who is Jesus? That was a, a great sermon series. So this now moves us into our next series, What is the Church? What is the church? And this morning, I'll be talking about what is the church, and I'll be talking about systematic love in Jerusalem, caring for each other's souls. Systematic, systemic love, excuse me, systemic love in Jerusalem, and caring for each other's souls. And it is found in Acts 42 through 45. Let me read that for you. And it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Yes, so that is Acts 42, uh, chapter 2, 42 through 45, and that's what I'll be dealing with this morning. Systemic love in Jerusalem, caring for each other's souls. <laughs> now, anybody that knows me knows that I have a thing for t-shirts. I, I have a thing for t-shirts. I, I, I don't care if I'm invited to a, a formal gathering where everybody is suited to the nines and a uh, 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 locked stock and barrel suited and booted, I would probably go in a t-shirt, a printed t-shirt. And, and, and all of my t-shirts, just about all of my t-shirts have a message on them. Uh, for instance, I have a t-shirt that says, I am black history. And that t-shirt has a message behind it because uh, I, I figure I'm black history because where I come from, um, uh, I wasn't uh, expected to live past 18. In fact, many of my friends and uh, acquaintances uh, that I grew up with are either dead or in jail. So I am black history. That's the message behind that shirt. But I have a thing for T-shirts. Um, and, I, and I saw a T-shirt with a striking message on it. And, and the message on it said, the church has left the building. The church has left the building. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get that shirt one day. The church has left the building. But what was so striking about this message is that most of us, most of us, most of us, most of us equate the church with a building. Most of us equate the church with a, a, a building with, with stained glass and, and, and pews. And it is often, it is often that we as pastors of tapestry are asked, when is tapestry going to get a building? Well, let me answer that for you so you don't ever have to ask. And if anybody asks you, you can relay this message to them. We will probably be in the school till Jesus returns. That, that's it. We will probably be in the school to Jesus returns. Uh, uh, the overhead is low. There's no pg and &E, And it does. The building does. The school does everything we need it to do. So we will probably be there until Christ returns. In fact, if somebody gave me a church now, I would take it. I would sell it and take the money and uh, do something else with it. But uh, we will probably be in the school to Jesus' return. Well, we'll probably be there to Jesus' return or they kick us out, whichever comes first. But you see, the church is not a building. The church is not a building. The church is not made up of bricks. The church is not made up of wood. The church is not made up of stucco. But the church is made up of individuals. People that have and are searching for the Lord Jesus. 
Uh, uh, we are the church of the living God. We are his witnesses here on earth. We are people of many cultures woven into the fabric of Oakland to display the beauty of God's story. We are the church. The, the church is not a building, but the church is a people. Um, even at his meal uh, before his death, Jesus tells his disciples to remember him. Uh, he gives them bread and wine as a symbol of his coming sacrifice. And, and he tells them not to forget him. Uh, uh, they were to live together and eat to remember him. <laughs> and you don't need a building. You don't need stained glass. You don't need pews to make that happen. There's no need to have a specific place where you meet God. Uh, God is everywhere. He encompasses all. God is everywhere. So you don't need a specific place to go to on Sunday mornings to meet him. God is everywhere. And, and it's not so much about where you gather as it is about as you gather. Let me say that again. It is not so much about where you gather as it is about as you gather. The, the church is living. Uh, the church is breathing sanctuaries. And, and, and systemic love is what uh, calls us together for the caring of each other's souls. Systemic love is what calls us together to look out for one another. Systemic love does just that. Uh, let me explain uh, to you. Um, systemic love does more than make converts. Systemic love does more than make converts. It makes disciples. And, and uh, it, it wasn't just about having meals and singing. It was about driving the church into its purpose. Uh, uh, this this, this, this uh, text, Acts 2, 42-45, it wasn't about uh, having meals and singing, but it was about driving the church into its purpose. Um, um, having meals and, and, and worship and fellowship, you see, that advanced the mission of the church. It, 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 it literally propelled the church forward. Um, um, it made the church effective in its outreach. Um, that is what is called the church unified, the church magnified, and multiplied. That is what is called the church unified, magnified, and multiplied. Uh, they were together and, and they made God big and they grew exponentially as a result. Um, the church had a testimony amongst the people. Uh, uh, and because of the way the people loved each other, uh, because of the way the people served the Lord, because of the way they got along, people had to take notice. This was a daily operation. Yes, they searched the scriptures daily. Yeah, they, 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 they met daily. Yes, they witnessed daily. Uh, uh, they increased in number daily and they won souls daily. Their faith was a day-to-day -day reality. It wasn't just a one-off thing. It wasn't just a, a, a once-a-week thing. It wasn't just a Sunday thing. <laughs> That's why here at Tapestry, uh, you're encouraged to get involved in the life of others. You see, when you develop relationships outside of Sunday, when, when you develop relationships outside of once a week, when you develop ongoing relationships, you can start 
doing the work of caring for someone else's soul. Yes. And in this text, I see seven benefits uh, that caring for each other's soul could have on a church. In this text, I see seven benefits that caring for each other's uh, so for each other's souls could have on a church. Um, first of all, I see um, instruction. Uh, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Um, this was for growth to be effective. Uh, 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 this was this is for growth to be an effective witness to the world. You know, people need also people need proper instruction, not to be persuaded by false teaching. And, and, and also, just as the apostles had been instructed by Jesus. So they passed along that instruction to new Christians. Well, the, the second benefit I see here is a, a fellowship. And to fellowship. Um, uh, the fellowship with other believers, fellowship uh, with others provides for you encouragement. Um, um, we are so different, but yet the same, we are so different, but yet the same. And, and, and what fellowship does is fellowship provides a window to who we are. Uh, fellowship provides a door to who we are. When uh, we are in fellowship together, we get to know each other. And and, and, and that word fellowship, it, 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 it implies a close relationship. It implies a close relationship. Well, benefit number three, um, remembering the Lord's Supper uh, to the breaking of bread. Uh, uh, here we are pausing to remember the Lord by observing his last meal with his disciples. He, he said, as often as you do it, do it to remember me. And, and, and remembering the Lord's Supper was a benefit of the early church. Well, uh, that was three, so benefit number four. Benefit number four is corporate prayer. And to prayer. Um, um, I know it sounds a bit cheesy, and I, and I say it all the time, but the family that prays together stays together. I, I know that sounds... Uh, a, a bit corny, but it is so true. And, and, and they're sharing in prayer together and in their private houses of worship uh, had them sticking together. <laughs> the family that prays together stays together. Uh, the next benefit is effective outreach. Everyone was filled with awe. Um, um, the signs that were performed by the apostles uh, were convincing to unbelievers. Uh, it was a sign uh, to tell the people that God is with this group of people. Uh, uh, God walks with them. God is with them. Yes, effective outreach. Um, and the next thing is common cause they had everything in common listen they were all working for the same goal they, they, they all had the same goal in mind they, they, there was no division amongst them they were all working for the same thing and, and, and that implies a strong emphasis on their unity they were united Oh, have mercy if the church of God could be united. And then, last but not least, uh, there was mutual assistance. Mutual assistance. Um, they sold their possessions 
they sold their possessions and uh, uh, gave everything to the poor as they had need. As they had need. Um, this was totally voluntarily, totally voluntary, and it was totally motivated by love. It was totally voluntary and totally motivated by love. And, and it was motivated by their love for each other. It, it was totally voluntary and it was totally mo motivated by their love for each other. Uh, you, I, I mean, they had love for one another. In, in, in other words, how can you care for each other's souls if you don't even love each other? It was totally motivated. It was totally voluntary and totally motivated by their love for each other. And, and, and we are not to walk in this alone. We are to engage in this faith life together. We are to care for each other's souls. We are called to encourage. We are called to forgive. And we are called to carry each other's burdens. And we don't need a building to make that happen. What, what, what we need is willing participants. That, that recognize and realize that they are the church uh, uh, and have mutual love and respect for each other, have, have mutual love and respect for each other's ethnicity, have mutual love and respect for each other's race, have mutual love and respect for each other's culture. When we have this, we have a systemic love that wins in this cancel culture. <laughs> when, when we have a systemic love that, uh, that combats all systemic racism, when we have this, we have a systemic love that transcends our race and we can celebrate each other's culture. <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit will cause amazing amazing things to happen when the people are unified. When they are unified in their devotion to Christ and his kingdom program. Uh, uh, we're living out our faith and loving each other publicly. When we live out our faith and love each other publicly because public love, public devotion, public joy, public testimony will cause others to trust in Jesus. They were loving and kind to each other. When was the last time you were kind to your fellow Christian, to your fellow man? Uh, they're joining together, knit their hearts to each other. Um, and this uh, endeared them to one another. And all the people around them had to take notice. They, they, they had to know that there was something different about them. That, 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 that there was something special about this group. Something so special that others wanted to be a part of it. The, the, the way they cared for each other's souls could not be overlooked. People had to take notice. Uh, every now and again, I, 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 I like to play what if. And, and, and the what if this morning is, what if we recognize that we are the church? What if we realize that it wasn't about a building, that it wasn't about stained glass, that it wasn't about pews. What if we decided to be devoted to each other, to care for each other and be committed to Christ's work? What if we decided to be witnesses to Jesus's 
work. Living out our faith in such ways that people were shocked at how we actually got along. That, that, that men and women would come to know a Savior that died on an old rugged cross. That, that, that died for a people and not for a building. That, that, that died that rich and poor people alike. That, uh, uh, that died that people like you and me could be in a right relationship with God. That died for repeat offenders to have another chance. And another chance. And another chance. And another chance. A savior that got up Sunday morning and declared that he had all power. And I think I ought to let you know when he turned water into wine, that was just some power. When he fed 5,000, that was just some power. When he unstopped deaf ears, that was just some power. When he opened blinded eyes, that was just some power. When he cleansed ten lepers, that was just some power. When he healed a woman with an issue of blood, that was just some power. When he raised Jairus' daughter, that was just some power. But early Sunday morning, that was all power. Jesus is coming back, friends, and when he does, it won't be for a building, but it will be for his church, that living, that breathing, those living and breathing sanctuaries. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has left the building, and since the building is empty, Let's go out and be the church.